General Agreement on Trade in Services The General Agreement on Trade in Services GATS is a treaty of the World Trade Organization WTO which entered into force in January 1995 as a result of the Uruguay Round negotiations. The treaty was created to extend the multilateral trading system to service sector, in the same way the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade GATT provides such a system for merchandise trade. All members of the WTO are parties to the GATTs. The basic WTO principle of most favored nation MFN applies to GATTs as well. However, upon accession, members may introduce temporary exemptions to this rule. Historical Background while the overall goal of GATS is to remove barriers to trade, members are free to choose which sectors are to be progressively liberalized, i.e. marketized and privatized, which mode of supply would apply to a particular sector, and to what extent that liberalization will occur over a given period of time. Members' commitments are governed by a ratchet effect. Commitments are one way and are not to be wound back once entered into. The reason for the rule is to create a stable trading climate, i.e. a market. However, Article Roman 21 allows members to withdraw commitments, and so far two members have exercised the option U.S. and EU. In November 2008, Bolivia gave a notification that it will withdraw its health services commitments. Some activist groups consider that GATS risks undermining the ability and authority of governments to regulate commercial activities within their own boundaries, with the effect of ceding power to business interests ahead of the interests of citizens. In 2003, the GAT Swatch Network published a critical statement supported by over 500 organizations in 60 countries. At the same time, Countries are not under any obligation to enter international agreements such as GATS. For countries that like to attract trade and investment, GATS adds a measure of transparency and legal predictability. Legal obstacles to services trade can have legitimate policy reasons, but they can also be an effective tool for large-scale corruption. Four modes of supply. The GATS agreement covers FAGER modes of supply for the delivery of services in cross-border trade. Sectors addressed. Services sector classifications addressed in the GATS are defined in the so-called W-120 list, which provides a list of all sectors which can be negotiated under the GATS. The title refers to the name of the official WTO document, MTN. GNS slash W slash 120. There are 12 service sectors business, communication, construction and engineering, distribution, education, environment, financial, health, tourism and travel, recreation, cultural and sporting, transport, and other divided into subsectors. Criticisms. The GATS agreement has been criticized for tending to substitute the authority of national legislation and judiciary with that of a GATS disputes panel conducting closed hearings. WTO member government spokespersons are obliged to dismiss such criticism because of prior commitment to perceived benefits of prevailing commercial principles of competition and liberalization. While national governments have the option to exclude any specific service from liberalization under GATS, they are also under pressure from international business interests to refrain from excluding any service provided on a commercial basis. Important public utilities such as water and electricity most commonly involve purchase by consumers and are thus demonstrably provided on a commercial basis. The same may be said of many health and education services which are sought to be exported by some countries as profitable industries. This definition defines virtually any public service as being provided on a commercial basis and is already extending into such areas as police, the military, prisons, the justice system, public administration, and government. Over a fairly short time perspective, this could open up for the privatization or marketization of large parts, and possibly all, of what today 
are considered public services currently available for the whole population of a country as a social entitlement to be restructured, marketized, contracted out to for-profit providers, and eventually fully privatized and available only to those who can pay for them. This process is currently far advanced in most countries, usually and intentionally without properly informing or consulting the public as to whether or not this is what they desire.